And I asked about the tense standoff with Russia over Ukraine. What are your plans toward American citizens who are in Ukraine and might be there during an invasion? What scenarios would you put American troops to rescue and get Americans out? They're not. That's a world war. When Americans and Russians start shooting at one another, we're in a very different world than we've ever been in. Not even on behalf of simply evacuating Americans? No. How, how, how do you do that? How do you even find them? This is not like I'm hoping that if, in fact, he's foolish enough to go in, he's smart enough not to, in fact, do anything that would negatively impact on American citizens. But have you Have you told him that? Yes. You've, you've told him to, that, that you know, Americans would be a line that they can't cross? Well, I, I didn't have to tell him that. He, I've, I've spoken about that. He knows that. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit... Uh, look, that's why, what I've asked is American citizens should leave, should leave now. We're dealing with one of the largest armies in the world. This is a very different situation and things could go crazy quickly. On the subject of American citizens, I have to draw your attention to that Army report, an investigative report that's come out about the lead up to the withdrawal from Afghanistan. It, it interviewed many military officials and officers who said the administration ignored the handwriting on the wall. Uh, another described trying to get folks in the embassy ready to evacuate, encountering uh, you know, people who are in, essentially in denial of, of this situation. Does any of that ring true to you? No. No, that's not what I was told. That you were told that the U.S. administration officials were prepared, they knew it was time to get out? No, what I was told, no one told me that, look, there was no good time to get out. But if we had not gotten out, they acknowledged that we would have had to put a hell of a lot more troops back in. It wasn't just 2,000, 4,000. We would have to significantly increase the number of troops, and we were back in this, this war of attrition. And, it, and there was no way we were ever going to unite Ukraine. I mean, excuse me, Iraq, Afghanistan. No way that was going to happen. And so this is a much wiser thing to do. I just want to clarify, are you rejecting the conclusions or the, the accounts that are in this Army report? Yes, I am. So they're not, not true? I'm rejecting them. Then there was today's sour headline on the economy. Inflation skyrocketing to 7.5%, a 40-year high. Prices still spiking on everything from used cars to gas to food. Inflation now costing the average American an extra $275 a month compared to last year. I think it was back in July you said inflation was going to be temporary. I think a lot of Americans are wondering what your definition of temporary is. Well, you're being a wise guy with me a little bit, uh, and I understand that's your job. But look, uh, at the time, what happened was the, uh, let's look at the reason for the inflation. And the reason for the inflation is the supply chains were cut off, meaning that the products, for example, automobiles, the lack of computer chips to be able to build those automobiles so they could function, they need those computer chips. When can Americans expect some relief from this soaring inflation? According to Nobel laureates, 14 of them that contacted me and a number of corporate leaders, it's ought to be able to start to taper off as we go through this year. In the meantime, I'm going to do everything in my power to deal with the big points that are, that are impacting most people in their homes.